this video, this is about trying to find out who Coney is, right? So my question is, who is Coney? And that's really a multifaceted question because Coney doesn't even know who Coney is. And that's the best part about it because he actually evolves through his music. My real name is Marconi, so everybody calls me by my artist name Coney. And I was born in Haiti, believe it or not. I came here when I was three years old. But growing up in Haiti, I still remember certain things. Like I still remember my father always leaving to come to the US and everything. So you know, um, I guess every time he left, he was trying to get make sure that my papers were good so I could come here and everything. So I came here when I was three years old. My my father married my stepmother. And one thing I could say about my stepmother, man, is like I love her so much. I, as a family, we've been through a lot. Cause not because it takes a special type of woman to, you know, treat a kid that you don't even know. Allow them in your home and take care of them. And, and for that I always appreciate my mother. It's your boy PM Shades from Carteret, New Jersey, also known as DJ. Come from a small town, not a lot of opportunities, you mean for me besides like sports and stuff like that. I've known Coney for about about like maybe like four or five years. Four or five years coming out of me when he was in high school and shit like that. You know, I, I thought he was a young boy by the time when I first met him, but you know what I'm saying? He grown up now, got a beard and everything. So, you know, it, it's, it's crazy when you watch like younger kids like under you that grow up and they start to find themselves as far as what they want to do. And you know what I mean? They start to grow in all aspects of life. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know what I mean? It's, it's actually a, a good sight to see. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud of him, everything he's doing. You know what I mean? Music wise, performing. Uh, having a new different sound actually, you know, the poetry, all that shit, it's like, it's amazing, you know what I'm saying? How you can take your feelings and express it on a beat and with a different flow and not sound like everybody else. So that's something I definitely, definitely look, you know, look into as far as Coney and his music. Oh, I'm glad you're here. Young celebrity in the building. Rock is on his way, hey shit. Young celebrity in the building. Like, yeah. Yeah. Make sure you promote everything, though, man. Come on, baby. Everything. Boy, I'm on Facebook decent, bro. I ain't for real. It's yeah, I'm talking to Missy. Nah. Man, Coney's been coming here for the longest. His haircut, you know what I'm saying? And to hear his music, the first time I heard it, it was like, you know what I mean? It was different. It was like something that's just fresh. I was like, I respected that he wasn't trying to follow the same lane everybody was going. He created his own lane. And, and, and that, to me, I was like, that was dope. They say continue doing the work and what matters. You know, I come across some artists and stuff, but you know, you know, you get these artists they just want to follow the same trend. You know, and I think a lot of times you gotta understand that, you know, music ain't always about necessarily, you know, record sales and all that, but more about you reaching out to the people and you staying true to what you believe is your art form. That's what real music is about. Cause I think truly music, you know, should reflect life. You know what I mean? I don't think life should reflect music. People don't realize that like I don't do good with death. Death was really something that messed me up. And 2011 was my roughest year, man. My grandmother came to live with us from Haiti. And everything was good at everything was good, man. And then one day like a 360 change happened and we got into a, a huge argument argument and it was just crazy because she basically raised me when I was younger she went to go live in Canada with my with my aunt which is also my god my godmother and over there in Canada she got really sick 
she got really sick and, and the doctors in Canada couldn't find out you know what was going on with her so she kept getting worse and worse and worse in Canada and then they transferred her to a hospital in Jersey I never had a situation like that it's somebody like I really cared for despite the argument despite the fights that we had like I really cared for her you feel me so I finally went to go see her I took a day off I finally went to go see her I'm, I'm looking at her right I'm looking at her I couldn't even recognize my grandmother. It was crazy. She had pancreatic cancer. The doctors gave her six months to live. She didn't even make the six months. One day I came home at seven o'clock and I don't see nobody in the house. Eight o'clock go by, nine o'clock go by, 10 o'clock go by, 11, 12, and then finally one o'clock in the morning comes and I see my dad come through the door, eyes red. He goes, Michael, she died. I don't have a mother no more, she's gone. And I'm like, what, you feel me? He's like, yo, she, and, he, and he's crying. So I'm like, what happened? So then, I, I go in my room and, and everything. Then with, when they was planning the funeral and everything, it just didn't seem real. It, it, it just didn't seem real, so during the whole church service, I'm just observing everything that's going on around me. I see everybody crying, everybody still hugging me, rubbing my back. I'm like, what? Then that's when they started to bury her. I'm watching, you know, the, the casket go low, lower, lower. And that's when it just hit me like, like a, a big, like I felt like I just got kicked in the stomach. And I just started wailing, bro. I started wailing, like, I started crying and everything, like I wanted to jump in, you feel me? In, into the casket. Like, it still doesn't seem real. I feel like, I can't lose nobody no more. Like, that shit hurt. That's one thing I learned about life is that no matter. Like, I literally lost myself that year, man. And that's when I turned into my poetry. My name is Ralph Jermaine. I'm a, uh, I'm a barber at, at Upper Cuts Barbershop in London, New Jersey. I've known Pony for about like two years. And um, it's crazy how like it transpired, whatever. Um, but he ended up sitting in my seat and you know, I laced him of course, you know. Course. And, and like ever since then, it's been like a, it's more like a, like a little brother, big brother relationship. I don't really see him as like a customer or anything like that. Like he comes to me, and like we chop it up about anything and everything. And you know, I try to give him my honest answer, and then, then we kind of reflect. And he teaches me a couple of stuff because he forces me to have a different perspective because he's coming from a different era. So it's always like a building thing that we do through his experiences that he's experiencing right now. He's able to then put that on wax and put that in a language and then convey it to his audience and then now they get a different perspective and now that opens up their horizon. So it's kind of like he's growing and he's forcing his audience to grow with him. Hip hop the way to me the way it's supposed to be is it's it's a it's a form of poetry. It's poetry and what you do is you lace it over beats and he's actually more true to form than what than what hip hop was intended for. So I think. The fact that he's bold and unapologetic and the fact that he is a poet first and he's staying true to himself and then he puts that on wax and forces people to actually be sensitive. So I got him, got him, got him. Flow changing like the season, autumn, autumn. Uh, drinks in my hand, watch me do my dance, cause I'm too lit, too lit. I 
the ball. I'm the shit, I'm the shit, I'm the shit, I'm the shit. Look, from city to city, this always Courtney's a pretty room full of beautiful models. We popping bottles, damn. What you drinking? What you sipping? See, I'm sipping purple. Big glasses on my face, call me Urban. I'm finessing this beat, yeah, I'm killing these rappers. I'm finessing the soft with too lit, too lit. I'm a gotta be on, so pass the patrol. I'm sipping on slow, I'm sipping slow. Who knows when we going home? Yeah, we sipping henny. The bottle, 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 I got plenty. I just didn't want to live no more. Nothing really mattered to me anymore. I felt like I didn't have a purpose of living until one night I just had, I was this close to, you know, taking my own life one night. And nobody even knows, and nobody even knows that. My parents don't even know, my brothers and my sisters don't even know. And what I learned about this whole depression, this whole suicidal thing, is that we as humans, we don't know how mentally stable a person is. So, the little ignorant comment, the little smart remarks that we make to a person could really have a huge impact, a huge effect on us. I was being bullied in high school. I was being bullied in middle school. I was home at a point and not happy. I'm going through life. I always wanted to be accepted, you feel me? Because I was the oldest and I didn't have like a lot of attention, you feel me? So, I felt like, what's the point of me, you know, being alive? Like, if I was gone tonight or tomorrow, would anybody even care? Through it all, I was going through a rough breakup, but you know, I appreciate that breakup though. I was with this girl for five years and everything, you feel me? She motivated me, well, the breakup motivated me to even go harder. So, 2014, I was going through this breakup this breakup, I was stressing, going through it, I'm crying, all that shit, you feel me? And that's when I wrote Waves, and God heard my prayers, yo, God heard my prayers, yo. Waves was um, aired on Hot 97, you feel me? Shout out to the, everybody, Hot 97, Zuski, um, played my, my Waves and everything, that gave me my buzz, featured on um, Hot 97, Who's Next? Then the booking started coming and everything, and then that's where, you know, I like got my buzz from. And I thank God every day for that opportunity. I told myself I'm doing this documentary, you know, to actually save a life, maybe save a life. And I had people this girl DM me once, like, thank you for your music, because she's a cutter, and my music actually, you know, helped her, and she sent me pictures, and, the, and the, how deep the cut is, it's like, damn, so I know, like, I know what it feels like to be alone, I know what it feels like to fall into bad depression, I know what it feels like wanting to talk about your problems, but because it's so deep, you don't want to be judged, you don't want to, you feel me, like, you don't want to, be looked at different. You don't want nobody to feel bad for you, so you keep everything in. You keep everything in until it bottles up, until you're like, fuck it, I wanna go. <sighs> music, music saved my life, man. What people don't understand is with my music, when, when I was writing my music, I was changing my sex in my music. Like in one song, I'll tell my story, but I'll be a female. And then I changed my dad into my mom, and I changed my mom into my grandmother, my brother into my sister. So when you hear my song, it'll be indirect rather than direct. You feel me? So people wouldn't feel bad about me. Because in reality, everybody has their own problems. Everybody has their own problems growing up. So why talking to you about my problem is really going to help? How is me talking to you about my problem going to help? When in reality, after you listen, you're going to go deal with your own problem. My music is real because I talk from what I've been through and you won't hear me talk about guns because I don't live through that. I never held a gun. I don't smoke. I, I don't do drugs. So my music are not about drugs. Nothing. My music about 
pain music. Like I've been there. I lost. Not every scar and not every wound heals. You feel me? But I'm still in the healing process. You know me talking about it right now. I just opened the wound a little bit. And that wound got to heal. Cause like I'm, I'm the type of person that don't like to, you know, talk about my problems. You feel me? Like if anybody knows me, like I'm always hyped up, I'm always laughing. One thing I'm trying to change about myself is that like, I don't think of tomorrow. I don't think of the future. I live in today. And that's the one thing I'm trying to change myself. Like, why stress myself about the future if I could just enjoy these moments? I like to live in these moments right now. Who is Corny? Corny is a brother. He's a friend. He's an artist. I met Corny since 2002. We've clicked ever since. And I can feel our hearts fading away. I remember the first time he told me he was an artist. And it's bitter taste and kisses from your lips. What are you talking about? And it's ways after waves. And in and our emotions were enslaved. May 18, we're into he pulled me off. Remember those long nights when we'll stay he up went on that sleep? stage of course, when it rains, and it pours. bodied it. But it feels like an earthquake. He speaks from the heart. And I know your heart aches. You know, he's about his poetry. He speaks from the place. heart. And you can really feel the pain. You, always my run too. you know, and this love when you my listen getaway. to him. Loving you was my Who escape. is Cody? And you Cody is my best friend. He's always there to help us when we're feeling down. And, you choose to walk away. and he's always there to make well, us laugh. To plead my case. And I beg you to stay. But you're afraid. And it's ways. And it's funny because we used to not like him. Because like when he says he's depressed, it's not a lie. He was really depressed. Yeah, he, he closed himself off from his family. And we like hardly saw him. Uh -huh. Blood red. We were scared of him. He was always sad, and it's it was just crazy because like a couple years ago we just see him uh -huh. happy, and that's when he started making music. Okay. And it's happy. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So lately we've been so We just love him. And I'm barely in the studio because I'm constantly reminiscing. Hi, Gani. And now we're saying bye to everything we had to do. And now we're finding an idea. And we always seem to be getting out of love. And I'm making this video to give you all of my support. Always with you, with your music. With your project, always, 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 and remember, remember that you promise that we're gonna be good. Yeah, we're gonna be good. Yeah, Connie. Yeah, never give up, never, and remember. Coney, Coney, Coney. There's a lot of things I can say about Coney, but one thing I can really say is that I'm proud of the fool. He started, well, me and Coney really got close when we entered high school. And it's like he knew right what was going on. Like, if, like he was in my shoes during that era of when that song came during that time. Like he knew what, it's like he tries to hit different parts of people's lives. He tries to hit that darkest part of a person's life that people try not to revisit, that people want to live in the past. But he find a way to hit it anyway without calling a person out, without you know, targeting them. He finds a way to bring that out of a person without directly hitting a person. I'm proud of you, Bonnie. He, he, he really doing his thing out here. That's crazy. That's good. I commend him on a lot. You just need to keep it up. Keep your head strong and don't let nobody knock you down. Man, my name is Huda Wiz. I'm the director of this project. First off, I want to thank Coney for allowing me to
create and be a part of this production. It was a long journey to getting this done and getting it to you guys, but it's an amazing project that we're both proud of and that we hope everyone would enjoy. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for their contributions. I want to thank Coney again, man. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be putting this thing together. So I'm glad that you selected me to be a part of this. So I didn't know much about who Coney actually was. I haven't met Coney or anything else until I, I was in a group chat from a video shoot that I was doing. And he was cracking all these jokes. I'm like, who is this guy, man? He's just making all these jokes, man. He's funny as hell. Who is this guy? So, you know... I go to the video shoot, I meet him, man, he, he's just a ball of energy, the same exact energy that he was giving in the same group chat, man, just making everybody laugh, bringing joy, so at the while, he, he DM'd me on Instagram, and he just, uh, you know, he told me, you know, his story and what he needed me to do, and, you know, one thing I want to say is that you would, you, you never know what people are going through, you know, um, personally, I lost my own little brother to, um, to suicide. So, uh, you know, it's a it's a sensitive topic that I can definitely relate to. And I feel like I could take on the project and from a, a, a good perspective. I'm glad that, you know, we were connected. It was all God, man. He put this together so that, you know, we could bring this to you guys. As far as who Coney, I want to say that I know him way better now. I feel like I, I know him way better. Uh, you know, we met, connected, you know, worked tirelessly on this documentary, and we established a brotherly bond. So, you know, I got much love for Coney, man. You know, he a brother to me, man. Anything he need, he can call me. It doesn't matter, man. Coney, love you, bro. Appreciate you for bringing me in on this, man. We out.